Simple yet elegant. Let's cut this open and see if it really is the world's best chicken parmesan. Hey everyone, I'm Dave and today we're making the world's best chicken parmesan. Well, at least we hope that's the case. As always on this channel, we like to look up the world's best recipes, see what Google, the search engine offers up as dinner, and then we try cooking it and see if it really is the world's best. So we're gonna look up world's best chicken parmesan recipe. And I'm gonna spell it wrong, hold on, got it. And it looks like the number one recipe actually comes from a website called Cafe Delights. And it looks pretty good, pretty simple, no pasta or anything like that, just straight up chicken parm, which honestly I'm ready for, I'm hungry. So let's get to cooking. So the first thing we wanna do is get the oven turned on. So my oven's inside, I already turned it on, it says 430 degrees or 220 Celsius. And then you wanna lightly grease a baking dish or an oven tray, whatever an oven tray is, with non-stick cooking spray and set aside. So I've got some cookie sheets. We'll do that in a little bit, but the oven is turned on and preheating. So let's get to the actual first thing, which is getting the chicken ready. Molly, my psychotic dog is running by with her toy. Molly, come here, come on. All right, so for starters, we want an egg or two, but it looks like I have a cracked egg by accident. That's my bad. I might have broken it. I'm not too gentle with the eggs. So let's get an egg. How many eggs do we need? Two eggs. Calls for two large eggs, and all I have is small eggs. Are these small? Uh-oh, about to lose my eggs, oh no. All right, so anyways, get your eggs. Oh, they are large. Okay, so two eggs, perfect. And what we wanna do is crack these two eggs into our bowl. So that's simple enough. Crack the eggs into the bowl. You know, set the shell aside. You don't want to eat the shell. Shells aren't yummy. All right, so we've got our eggs in a bowl. And what we want to do now is add in our garlic. We're going to whisk these in a minute, but we've got a couple other things we have to... <sighs> Everything's falling on me today. <sighs> Hi, I'm Dave. I'm not a professional cook. This is just a show where we cook and we have fun. And I try to make recipes really easy so you can try them at home because I am not a professional. My, the extent of my training was seventh grade. I took a cooking class after school. And then I did take cooking as an elective in high school because I really enjoyed cooking. But yeah, like I said, not a pro at all. Okay, so what we need next, guys, is some garlic cloves. We need two of them chopped up and a knife. So the knife is for chopping the garlic, said previously mentioned garlic. Now I will say I'm trying an overhead camera today for the chopping. I'm not really sure if it's gonna work out or not. So hopefully it's okay. We'll see though. This one has some like brown bits on it that I'm getting rid of. Can you see the garlic? I feel like maybe I need one more camera pointed at the garlic. Look how small these cloves are. I would almost call that one clove. I don't know. I don't, these are really small, but I guess it's okay. It says two cloves of garlic and that is technically two cloves, I guess. Anyway, so we want to dice this up. Can you see that at all? <laughs> I'm like talking to the camera. Can you see it? Can you see it? I mean, I don't know. It, this is like, the cooking channel, this is my cooking channel. It's a passion project. It's something I love to do. I love to cook and I always thought it would be fun to cook and make videos about cooking, trying to make cooking easier and more approachable for people who don't normally cook. And so that's what I'm doing here. But I'm also not a professional videographer, so I don't really have a ton of skill when it comes to filming this stuff. I'm just doing the best I can. And uh, you know, sometimes it turns out better than others. I'm gonna chop this really finely because this is supposed to go like on the chicken in the breading, which is totally unique. Normally you just put breading on something. Honestly, it sounds like a good, a good recipe. It's doing something I've never done before. It's taking this, it's putting it in with the eggs, this garlic, these two cloves go in with the eggs and that will hopefully end up on the chicken itself, like straight up cloves of garlic on the chicken. That sounds good to me as a garlic lover. Does it sound good to you? So we also wanna do two uh, tablespoons, is that right? Spoons of fresh chopped parsley. I'm gonna have to go inside and wash this. I don't have a sink out here yet. Two tablespoons, I don't know, what is that? Does that look like two tablespoons? Probably. So I'm gonna go rinse this and then we'll come back and we will chop it. You know, I've still gotta figure out a better way to do all this, right? Like. I'm cooking outside, if you couldn't tell. And I end up going back inside like 300 times for the simplest things. It's stuff you don't think about, right? Like if you're going to cook, you don't think, oh, I need to go get a tablespoon. It's just there in the drawer next to where you're cooking. What I really need out here is like some drawers with utensils just for when I cook out here. Because actually, it is kind of nice cooking out here. The other day I cooked out here just for my family, not even recording, because I kind of liked being out here and I had everything I needed, but... It's definitely not 
perfect yet. So anyways, we're trying to get two tablespoons of parsley to go in with the egg mixture as well. Two tablespoons seems like a lot, right? That's what it says though, two tablespoons. Smells like a tree. You know, every time I cut parsley, I say it smells like a tree. One and two. So I cut way too much parsley up, but that's okay. I can save it for later. Okay, now into the egg mixture, we're gonna add salt and pepper. So simple as that, throw a little salt in there. To taste it says, throw a little pepper in there. And that seems fine. And then we're gonna whisk it all up like so. Want it nice and well integrated. And the chicken's gonna actually go in here and marinate, but it doesn't seem like very much, does it? Am I missing something? Eh, okay, that's what it calls for. I thought it would be more liquid, but it's really not that much liquid at all. Okay, so we're entering the chicken zone. So let's see if we can't get some salmonella. I'm not trying to get salmonella, I'm just kidding. So it calls for three chicken breasts, and unfortunately, the store was selling them in two packs. So I'm gonna end up with one extra chicken breast, one more than I need at least, which is not ideal, but we're gonna do it anyways. And this was the stuff that was on sale. Normally I would get just like store brand, but this stuff was on sale, so I decided to go with this. So we're just gonna take one, two, and three of these out. And the other one we can store. And what it says to do is to fillet it, cut it in half and fillet it. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're just gonna cut these chicken breasts right in half. Now, I'm to the point now where anytime I cook, ch cook chicken breasts, you know, they always sell it in this giant fat form. I mean, I guess that's just the size of a chicken's breast. <laughs> but what I do now whenever I'm cooking chicken is I, I cut it in half lengthwise like so. And that just makes it so much easier to cook it evenly. I try to get it even, don't always succeed, but there we go. And then you can actually like pound it down with a meat tenderizer as well if you wanna get it even skinnier, which I might do. I have my meat tenderizer, I might do it, but then I don't know, I might not. It seems like it's gonna be okay. Two, and then here's our third one. And once you have these sliced in half, it says to just throw them in here with the egg mixture. So that's what we're doing. I'm just gonna put them in there and it says to let them marinate for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try to make sure they get all the juices and the eggs all up on them. It's marinating in garlic. I'm not really sure how big of an impact this is gonna have, but it says to do this for like 15 minutes. If you want to, you can do it overnight for an even better taste it says, but we're gonna do 15 minutes cause we're making a cooking video. Let me go wash my hands and I'll be right back. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna marinate that for 15 minutes covered in plastic wrap. So let's just put the little wrap on it. Keep it nice and safe from all the elements. And while we let that marinate, I've got a new knife, a clean cutting board. We're gonna start working on the sauce. Any Italian sauce has to start with, of course, an onion. So we're just gonna chop an onion. We won't do the whole onion chopping experience on camera, but you get the idea. Said onion will soon be chopped up. And holy cow, my knife is really dull. I could have sworn I just sharpened it, but I guess I failed. And everyone in the comments last time said, Dave, a dull knife leads to accidents. And I think they're totally right. So I'm gonna try to sharpen this again because I really don't wanna cut my finger off today. All right, so I just tried to sharpen the knife. Let's see if that made any difference. Yeah, it definitely feels sharper now. Okay, cool. We're good, guys, we're good. All right, anyway, so this is the step. Chop up an onion, dice it however you want to call it, and get it ready to go onto a, well, into a stove pot, really. Oops, pieces of onion are flying. Got to chop up the onionions. I always call it that because of the show King of Queens. Have you ever seen the show King of Queens? It's got Kevin James in it, and her name's Carrie in the show. What is her real name? Leah Ramini, I think. He was talking about how he doesn't like have anything cool he says, and his wife says, hey, well, the way you say onions, onionions. And I know I've told this story on this channel before, but, I'm telling it again for a reason, because tomorrow night, no, the night after tomorrow, I'm actually going to see Kevin James live do his like comedy routine. So that'll be kind of fun. I'm excited about that. Although I don't feel like he's gonna do the onionion bit. I don't think that really is that funny. For some reason, it just sticks in my head as funny. All right, we're getting two more cloves of garlic here, guys. This is for the sauce this time. First two cloves were for the chicken. Next two cloves are for the sauce. The saucy, saucy sauce. Uh, well, it's kind of three cloves, but this one's tiny. I don't know, it's always tricky. It's not an exact science, it's not baking, right? We can have a little bit more, a little bit less. At the end, we're just hoping for a really good chicken parmesan. So do you call it chicken parmesan or parmigiana? I will say it does seem like if I ever order this, ah. All right, whatever. That's not in the cards. These are the two. These are the two cloves, that's fine. It's more accurate to the recipe anyways, because it said two cloves. 
All right, so chop up these cloves. I feel like anytime I ever order chicken parm at a restaurant, it always comes with some sort of pasta. So it's kind of weird that this doesn't call for pasta, but at the same time, I'm trying to watch my calories and my carbs. So I'm fine with skipping the pasta tonight and just going with the chicken. The chicken is gonna be healthier anyways. All right, so we got chopped up onion. We got two cloves of chopped up garlic. We're almost ready to start on the sauce. Okay, so I'm gonna head over here to where my pot is. I'm gonna turn on the stove and we're gonna try to get this sauce ready while this chicken is still marinating. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna get the stove started. Whew, that thing burns hot. Bring it way down. We definitely don't wanna burn this thing. Nice and low here. And we're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil into this pot. So we'll use this tablespoon. It doesn't need to be an exact thing, but about a tablespoon of olive oil into the pot. And then as is typical with many dishes, you get your oil on there, you then add the chopped up onions. So we're gonna put the onions in there and cook them. Add the onions here. I got some more, hold on. Can't really have too many onions, right? I don't think I've ever actually made chicken parmesan at home, but I've ordered it a lot in restaurants. So I feel like I'll be able to judge pretty well if this really is the world's best chicken parm recipe. Like the last one I did was Cincinnati chili, which I had never tried. Good video, really good recipe. You should check that video out after this, but I couldn't really judge it as to whether or not it was the world's best Cincinnati chili since it was the first one I ever had, but you get my point. Let's get these onions nice and hot. We're gonna cook them until transparent, like three, four minutes max probably. And I'm gonna get a spoon to stir them up because that's inside too. Stir these up before they burn. Had to go get a spoon. This pot may be a little small, to be honest. Like I normally would use something a little bit wider. I don't know if the onions are all gonna get cooked being so small. All right, so these onions are starting to look pretty good here. Still just cooking them a little longer. It's probably been like two and a half, three minutes. I might go a little bit longer, but they're getting close. They're starting to look translucent, which is the recipe's, you know, instruction is get them so they start to look translucent. And I think we're pretty much there, so. What'll go in next is the garlic. So have that on standby. We're gonna put the garlic in for like 30 seconds. And then we're gonna add the tomato puree. So the tomato puree, it specifically calls for this thing. This is passata, passata, literally passata tomato puree. Now, when I looked it up, passata has never been cooked versus normal tomato puree you get will have been cooked and then canned. And so I had to try to find the thing that actually said passata and I ended up having to order it on Amazon. And not only that, Amazon only sells it in a six pack for $25. So you could probably just use normal tomato puree. Let's be real. But I'm trying to follow the recipe to a T and you know, see if it really is the world's best. So I got to try the right sauce, so. All right, let me add the garlic. I think it's ready. All right, garlic will go right in here. Do that for 30 seconds until it starts smelling garlicky. Fragrant is what people like to call it. And then we're gonna add 14, 14 ounces of this passata. Now, again, the problem with how I got my passata is the only way to get it was in a big 24 ounce jar. I feel like I could just drink it, like it's a soda or something. Do you dare me to? No, I'm not going to. Maybe I will after I pour some in. It smells really good though. It's probably just gonna taste like pure tomatoes because that's what it is. So I need to only use 14 ounces. There's 24 in here. So I need to somehow leave 10 ounces. I'm gonna have to do a little guesswork here. We're gonna pour it in. Let's see, is that 10 ounces left? I think that's about 10 ounces left. Stir that in. I'm gonna bring my heat down. I don't wanna burn these tomatoes. So I'm gonna just bring my heat down a little bit. Nice and low. We're also gonna add the Italian herbs. So Italian herbs is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a spice they sell in the spice area, Italian herbs. And do one teaspoon of that in here, which we're basically making a tomato sauce. It's interesting though, like Posada is very popular right now. So it's, it's trending as it were on the Twitter. Very oniony sauce. Okay, so we got that in there. Now let's add some. Okay, so it says salt and pepper to taste. We can do that, that's easy. Here's some salt. I, I never got that though, to taste. Like, I guess I could actually taste it. I normally don't. And then pepper, this thing is pretty aggressive. So I'm gonna pour it in my hand first and then dump it in just to be careful. It says optional. A teaspoon of, is it a teaspoon? A teaspoon of sugar. I think I'm gonna do it because I feel like to get the full experience, we should put every ingredient. Okay, so I got the sugar from inside. I spilled it all over the house. You got to miss out on that, but trust me, it's all over the house. That's a problem for future Dave because right now I gotta make sure this doesn't burn. So I added the teaspoon of sugar to the sauce and we're just gonna let that simmer, I believe. And I kind of want it to be bubbling. I don't know, should it be bubbling? Maybe I'll turn the heat up a hair. So it says cover with a lid and simmer for about eight minutes or until sauce has thickened slightly. I, of course, did not bring a lid out here. So let me go get a lid. <laughs> I forget everything. Okay, now it's really bubbling. 
whatever, <laughs> that'll do. I don't know where the right lid is. Normally if I'm trying to get a lid for a pot, I have the pot with me and I try all the lids on it to see which one fits. But this time, since it's already cooking out here and I don't want to keep going back and forth, we're just going to use this lid because it mostly covers it. And we're going to simmer this for eight minutes, probably seven minutes because I just spent a minute looking for the lid. All right, moving on. We've got our chicken. It's been resting for 15 minutes in the liquid. We're now going to make our breading on this cookie sheet. You could use a bowl or whatever. I'm going to use a cookie sheet because I like using a cookie sheet when it comes to breading stuff. It's really nice. I get a lot of space. Oh, we're going to need a couple breadcrumbs though, okay? So the recipe calls for panko breadcrumbs, which I have right here, and Italian style, like regular run-of-the-mill breadcrumbs. What are these? Progresso. And what it says is do a cup of the panko and a half a cup of the Italian style. I think that there's a lot of people out there that when they cook, they get everything ready first and then they start cooking. Me, I'm seat of your pants kind of chef, I guess. I'm learning that as I cook outside because I keep having to go back in and get more stuff. Okay, so that was a half a cup of the Italian and then a cup of normal panko, which I'm excited about because I don't actually like panko breadcrumbs very much. Sacrilege, I know everyone loves panko breadcrumbs. I'm not that into them. I don't think they're that good. I'm gonna stir my sauce over here. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to. I don't wanna burn it. Give it a little stir, it's thickening up a little bit. It's looking good. All right, you also want a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, which is just, you know, the stuff you get at the store. Grated, it's really good on top of your pizza. Half a cup of that mixed in as well. And this is all gonna be our breadcrumb mixture. All right, and then the final thing this calls for is one teaspoon of garlic powder or onion powder. I'm gonna go with garlic. I mean, I don't know, I guess you just go with your preference. I prefer garlic. And then we can stir this all up, mix it up nice and good. You want a little bit of it to get on everything. Well, like a little bit of each. I might even use my hands, which I just washed, by the way. It'd be easier to mix it up. You know what this smells? Oh man, I'm getting nostalgia kicks right here. Do you remember the breadsticks at Pizza Hut? Especially the ones they sell at like Target. That is exactly what I'm smelling right here is the breadsticks from the Target Pizza Hut. Mm. Or my childhood when we used to go to the Pizza Hut buffet. I think it was like every Tuesday or Friday when I was in high school. We would like go there for lunch and just eat an outlandish amount of pizza. Mm, yummy. Okay, so we're about to put the chicken in there and get it all breaded, but we're gonna turn on another burner to get to frying the chicken. Now, in a strange turn of events, this calls for frying the chicken in olive oil, which is not something I normally would do, but that's what it calls for, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take the olive oil, half a cup, put it onto my skillet over here, which I'm actually gonna put right next to our saucy sauce, the saucy sauce. We'll do a half a cup of olive oil, and that's how we're going to fry up my alarm's going off. That's how we're gonna fry up our chicken, is in the olive oil. My alarm's going off because this sauce is pretty much good. I'm gonna set it aside off of the heat. And I'm gonna move the chicken onto this burner. I think that's a good way to do it. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit so we can fry the chicken. Probably like medium heat, I would say. Okay, let's get the oil hot and then we're gonna head back over here and we're gonna start getting the chicken all breaded. Now I might get a plate or two just to simplify my life. I have somewhere to put the chicken once it's breaded. You know what, I'm just gonna use another cookie sheet. So I'll put that down next to this. And we've got a little breading station here now. I'm gonna open this back up. I always like to open it with like flair, right? Open it up in a, with gusto as it were. So anyways, grab your first piece of chicken, put it into the breading. You can do it like this if you want. Get breading all over it, nice and covered. Good coverage. This is where all the flavor is and then set it on our other tray here. And we'll do that again. We're just gonna do this for all the pieces of chicken. We had three, we cut them all in half, so we have six total. It might get a little cramped on that cutting board, but I don't think it's a big deal. The only thing that's weird is like, a lot of this garlic is gonna stay left behind. The garlic in the chicken marinade, but I guess it was really just to get the flavors on there. Maybe you weren't actually supposed to have garlic chunks on the chicken. We're just getting these all nice and breaded. Hopefully you can see it okay with the overhead cam. If that works well, I'm ex I'll be excited. It's like I was saying earlier, like this channel is like a passion project, something I love doing. You guys seem to enjoy the videos. So I'm trying to make the videos better and better, but I'm no pro videographer, Vide videographer, videographer. So I'm constantly experimenting, right? And trying new things and seeing what works for the channel. Uh, so every now and then you'll see things change and then I'll go back because I may not have liked the change. And that's kind of how you learn, right? You try things and you learn things. So let me get this out of here. I'm gonna have to wash my hands again. I'll be right back. Okay, so the oil is super hot. Hold on, let me turn down the heat a little. It's too hot for me to put the chicken in. You see it steaming? It's a smoke point of the oil. I might have to do new oil too. I don't know. Is that, is that okay? I gotta move my, it took me forever cause I couldn't find a cookie sheet and I need a cookie sheet and I just use both my cookie anyways. It's a whole thing. I'll be honest, this is why I normally wouldn't use olive oil 
to fry something. It's because olive oil has like a super low smoke point and I believe after it smokes it burns. I'm pretty sure how that, that's how that works. Olive oil, like extra virgin like I have, smokes at like 375, which is normally what the temp I like to fry stuff at. So it's kind of a weird oil to use. But anyways, we're gonna use it because that's what the recipe calls for. And we're gonna start putting some chicken in here. I'll probably do three at a time, do it in batches. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best bet. So we don't go over and spill it or anything like that. So we're adding three pieces of chicken there. And I forgot to get a plate to put them in once they're done, but we'll do that in a second. Let me just make sure the heat's on. Yeah, it is. All right, so I went and I washed my cutting board. Hopefully the chicken didn't burn while I was doing that. I don't think it did, because I turned the heat down, I think, too much. Now it's not hot enough. Oh well. I'm gonna flip it anyways. I'm supposed to basically do like three to four minutes on each side on medium to medium high heat. I have some trouble regulating this grill because it's very weird. It doesn't have like a medium setting, so I don't always get it spot on. But we're doing our best. So we're gonna try to get this up to an internal temp of 165 degrees so we don't get salmonella. You know, pretty good idea. Let me get my chicken thermometer. I guess it's more of an anything thermometer than a chicken thermometer, but I think we still need a little more time. Let's let this keep rolling. I can still see the raw chicken, so I know it's not done yet. I'm gonna flip it one more time, see if we've got some browning. Yeah, a little bit. I know that side still needs to cook because I can still see it raw. All right, we're gonna check the temp on this chicken. See where we're at. 130, 134, 137. You know, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna tell you why. Golden and crispy. I think we're there with the golden and crispy. That looks pretty good. That one's a little extra golden, but that's okay. We're gonna cover it here. Let's take a look in the camera there. Okay, so here's why we're gonna take that off. I just reread the recipe, and it actually says that you don't need to cook it all the way to 165 in the frying oil, because we're gonna be putting it into the oven after this anyways. So we got to like 135, 140. We take it off and we're gonna fry these other pieces. Since we've gotta like let the cheese melt and all that stuff, it's going into the oven at 430 degrees for 15 minutes soon. And during that time, it's gonna cook the rest of the way through. And I will make sure to check the temp again when we take it out of the oven. For this one, I'm just gonna straight up go to like 130, 135, and then we'll be ready to go on to the next step. Now, I wanna say this too, and you can do this earlier, later. You can buy it pre-sliced. But one of the next steps is gonna include this fresh mozzarella cheese I'm holding, slice. So I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna slice it really quick, just into small slices, and it's gonna end up going on top of the chicken. So I'm gonna slice this up over here, and like I said, just make some thin slices here. Probably a little thicker than that, actually. I don't know what the best tool is. I did see you can buy it pre-sliced. That probably is what I should have done, but I didn't. So now I've gotta slice it. Now you do want to get a cookie sheet ready, and that cookie sheet is going to be what the chicken goes on when it goes into the oven. It does say you should spray it down with some Pam or grease it in some way. And if you're thinking, hey, I really want to eat a piece of this mozzarella, well, I don't blame you, because I do too, and I might do it. Look, that piece makes no sense. Mm. Can't go wrong. Everyone loves good mozzarella cheese, right? Not everyone, but I do. I love it. I just don't like what it does to your breath after you eat it. All right, so we're almost done with this chopping of the, the mozzarella. We're gonna probably flip our chicken and then I'm gonna go get a cookie sheet for us to actually put this on. Let's give it a little flip. Uh-oh, I got my heat too high. I mean, it's not burnt, but it's on the edge. All right, I'm turning my heat down a little for this next go. All right, so I've got my cookie sheet and I'm gonna spray that with Pam. Okay, set that over near my cutting board. And I can actually already put these three pieces of chicken on there. I might go ahead and do that. One, two, three. All right, let's check the temp on this chicken. 120, 115. We need to go a little longer, but I also wanna be careful not to burn the breading. Yeah, it's got a little, you can go a little longer on it. There's no hard and fast rule though, honestly. I could take it off now and just make sure I don't take it out of the oven until it hits the safe temperature. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's turn it off. We're gonna bring it over here. We're gonna set this onto the cookie sheet as well. Beautiful. Beauteous Maximus. And we're gonna bring our sauce over to this table. 
so we can start saucing up the chicken. Look at that, that's all so beautiful, isn't it? All right, so since we've got our sauce, we're gonna stir that up. It's like, it's still steaming. Can you see that? You can't see that. Trust me, it's still steaming. You might've been able to see it. <laughs> so I'm gonna stir it up a little bit, and then we're gonna do a third cup of sauce on each piece of chicken. So literally just take a measuring cup, third cup. Now, obviously that's not gonna apply to this tiny one, but to these big ones, the third cup should be fine. And I'm gonna do it super sloppy because that's how I roll. And last one gets a third cup as well, which I'm not good at measuring. The problem is I was doing heaping cups, but you get the point. So basically you just want full coverage, I think. You want some sauce in every bite. The sauce looks really good, very oniony and delicious. Like I said, one or two of these pieces is a little overcooked breading wise, but that's all right. It's all gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be the world's best. I can feel it. It smells amazing. I'm getting legitimately excited. I do get excited about food when it gets close. This has been a, a labor of love. All right, and then we wanna take our chicken, our cheese that we cut up and place that on the chicken. Now it says like two slices per piece and we'll kind of see how that goes as we do this. Hopefully I have enough cheese here. That would be bad if I didn't. Actually, you know what? I think I have another block. I think I bought a second block of it. So I'd be okay. Some cheese on that one. I think we're fine. One, two. Now we'll throw a little more cheese on that one because we got the cheese. A little more on here and maybe we've got some more snack and cheese. What do you think? Yeah. Now it's just a sprinkle with Parmesan. So we're just gonna put a little Parmesan on each piece. It says two tablespoons for all six pieces, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna get close just by eyeing it. And then the last thing it wants us to do is throw a little parsley on there. This is looking legitimately delicious at this point. Uh, parsley or basil. Do you really wanna cook the basil though? I guess we can. Let's chop up a little basil. There is a large amount of people that don't like basil, so I could get why you'd go parsley, but I prefer basil to parsley. I don't think parsley really tastes like anything. There's already parsley in the actual breading, so let's mix it up and do the basil and hope it doesn't burn. I don't think it will. And so once we get the basil on here, we're gonna throw this into the oven, 430 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes, basically until your chicken has an internal reading of 165 and your cheese is all melty and gooey and delicious. So I'm gonna bring this inside, put it in the oven, and then we'll be back in a minute with completed chicken Parmesan the best in the world. All right, guys, here we are. The chicken parm is done, except for one piece. There was one piece that was only at like 160, 155. I wasn't super comfortable taking that one out of the oven, so I put it on a separate dish. And so this will be our chicken parm right here that we're gonna test. We'll set these aside. I mean, it's simple in its beauty, you know? Simple yet elegant. Let's cut this open and see if it really is the world's best chicken parmesan. All right, uh, kind of fell apart there. My knife's not very sharp, but we're gonna try this. Make sure we get some of the chicken, some of the cheese, some of the sauce, and here we go, down the hatch. The breading is very good. Like the Parmesan cheese, you know what I was saying, smelt like Pizza Hut at uh, Target. That's really adding a ton of really good flavor to the chicken, and it's just very, very tasty. Here's what the bite looks like, guys. A little crispy on the bottom, but whatever. Fantastic, fantastic. Mm, world's best, hmm. Well, the only thing I would say is I'm gonna take some of the extra sauce I had and be able to dip it in the sauce because I want more sauce with it. Other than that, it's perfect, I love it. Awesome, try this recipe. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more of the world's best recipes. We'll see you next time.